the first order of business here is to figure out how to mount this pulley directly to the auger shaft. Uh, the snowblower originally came with a disengaging lever. As you can see, there's kind of like a knuckle going on here that engages the pulley. And I have to figure out how to make that spline mount directly to the pulley, directly to the auger. The solution is to mount the pulley directly to the piece that has the splines on it and put a set screw in the back and then I'll mount it permanently to the auger housing. I got all the holes drilled in the center. I got the pulley on directly in the center pretty good and it fits directly onto the shaft and it's a good fit. Once I got this blower housing apart, I realized that one of the fins on the auger was bent. Uh, looked like somebody had sucked a rock through there or something, so I got out the torch and I heated it and I beat it back with a sledgehammer until I got it straight. After a lot of grinding, getting some welds grinded off and a lot of sanding, I finally got the end off of this auger housing. Now I just gotta clean it up a little bit and do the other one so I can weld them together. Here we have uh, two snowblowers side by side. One's a 24 inch, one's a 32 inch. It's going to give a total of 56 inches of a clearing blade, which is just wide enough for the Bobcat. As you can see, I got one of the sides off one, and I just got to get the other one up on the table to get the side off that. I got about three to four solid hours with this wire wheel on the grinder cleaning up the metal. It was a messy, messy job, but we got it done. As you can see, somebody uh, got in here on this older impeller and cut it out with a torch to allow more snow in, so I have to do that to the other one to match. And here's the second impeller. I took it off the shaft to make it easy on myself, and I notched it just like the other one. Not round like the other one, but uh, I think it'll do the trick. The first coat of paint on the auger blades, uh, I'm using a brush to get it on nice and thick to get a good coating. I finally got both housings up on the table with the walls removed and I'm going to start stitching it together with the old 110 MIG welder. A couple coats of self etching primer, kind of follow that up uh, with some sandable primer before I put the color on. Time for some safety orange. Uh, I originally wanted some rust oleum. For some reason, rust oleum safety orange is not available in my area, so I had some Benjamin Moore mixed up, and I think it'll do a great job. I found out that it's not so easy to brush on these augers without getting it all over myself as well, so I ended up thinning it down with mineral spirits and spraying it on. This is the blower housing, all completely painted, uh, letting it dry a little bit. Came out really well. As you can see, the augers came out pretty good as well. And I even gave a coat of paint to the chutes. Here I am joining the two auger shafts together. Uh, they are threaded, which made it a little easier to center. I just had to uh, get the overall length correct so it would fit inside the blower housing and then tack it together.
here it is all assembled got the pulleys mounted to the back temporarily got it all tacked in the middle and it spins very very freely Upon further inspection, I noticed that it wasn't spinning quite as true as I'd like, so I took it apart and added a bearing in the center there to give it some support in the middle. Then I cut up one of the side pieces and modified an exhaust clamp to hold the bearing and got to get it all welded in place and it should work out just fine. Alright, I got that piece welded in the center there. As you can see, it pretty much ruined the awesome paint job that uh, <laughs> looked really good, but that's alright, we can fix that later. Uh, you can see the modified exhaust clamp holding the bearing perfectly where it needs to be. Uh, worked out just fine. I'm very happy with it. And here is the engine that I bought from Walmart.com. It's an 18 horsepower horizontal shaft with electric start. Uh, should be plenty of power for this machine. I added the electric PTO clutch uh, so I can disengage the augers when I need to. And I can't wait to get this thing all wired up and installed. Here's the engine mount that I've welded up so far. Pretty sturdy. I realized once I was welding this up that I would need a slot to put the belt through so I made a bolt and a relief there so you can separate that and slide the belt through uh, but it's pretty sturdy and it should be ready to go I needed to use the lathe to turn down the shaft uh, so the sprocket that I ordered would fit on the end I'm gonna use a chain drive for the chutes so we got it all trued up in the lathe and we're gonna turn it down so it holds the sprocket and here's the finished product. I trimmed the shaft down, turned it on the lathe. Now the sprocket fits right on the other end. And that piece is going to go directly over here to drive the chutes. And we're going to line it up. It's going to send the chain clear across to the other side, hopefully missing the clutch. And we should have chute operation simultaneously. I have the chain strung between the two chutes. Uh, a lot of fabrication in this one. Uh, I put two bolts as adjusters with slotted holes so I could make sure the chain was tight. Uh, on this one, as you can see right there, the two adjustment bolts. Uh, a lot of fabrication to get this all straight and welded up, but it's true and uh, it runs really good. They turn simultaneously. I'm going to make a guide to keep that away from the clutch so it doesn't catch up but uh, they turn pretty good. The electric motor is going to go right here to operate the chutes left and right and then I'll make a bracket to secure that in place. Here I made a guide for the chain to keep it away from the clutch. I even uh, lined it with plastic so it's not directly metal on metal. It's got a little give there and it'll Keep it free and clear of any obstructions. I have the motor all mocked up. We're going to give the chutes a test run to see if they move. And they move perfectly, simultaneously. Nice. And here I've welded the two cutting edges together. Uh, they bolt right onto the bottom of the auger housing there to give it a nice clean edge so it scrapes nice. Here's a picture of the remote control that I've built. Uh, the upper left hand corner is the engine kill on and off. Upper right hand corner is the start button. Right in the center there you pull that out that starts the augers for the PTO clutch. And the very bottom is the left and right for the chutes to move them left and right. Here's the fabrication on the plate that attaches to the Bobcat itself. Uh, a lot of tedious cutting and welding, little one and a half inch pieces, uh, a lot of welding, a lot of measuring. Yeah, got it pretty perfect though, and it fits nicely on the Bobcat. Here's the Bobcat plate uh, attached to the blower housing. I use some pretty thick, uh, I believe it's two inch angle iron, 
very thick. I uh, had to crank the heat on the old 110 little welder to get the welds to penetrate. As you can see, I burned a lot of paint off, but that little 110 welder did good. We got some nice welds, and that thing is not going to go anywhere. Next order of business is I have to make a mount for this battery box here, so we'll get going with that. All right, I did some uh, more fabricating here, mounted the battery box. I also braced up the bobcat plate a little bit, make it a little more rigid. And I put these bolts on the side here again so I could get the belt on and off when I need to. Started doing some wiring. I got four relays that I have to wire up here. We have the left, the right on the auger. We have the PTO and the start relay. Uh, got them all wired up and working pretty good so we're gonna button this up a quick test run on the shoot controls we got left and right working pretty good and now we're gonna test the PTO we got the engine running we'll give it a pull and you can see the blades spinning spooling up nicely running nice and true and we shut it down making a cardboard template. I gotta make some kind of a shroud to keep the snow off the belt and the engine. So here's where it all begins. Get the cardboard before we transfer it to metal. And here's the transfer to the metal plate. I got it all drawn out. Just gotta cut it and bend it up. Alright, I got it all cut out and bent up. You can see here's the beginning of the shroud. It's covering the pulley nicely and keeping it hopefully dry from all the snow and here's the finished product got all the side pieces on got it all painted looks pretty good it should do a good job of keeping everything at least somewhat dry <laughs> 